Each and every one of us has the right to be living in a home filled with tranquility, filled with love, filled with mercy, compassion, rest and happiness. Every person on the face of this earth strives for happiness. Perhaps people differ with regards to their beliefs or their origins, their food and their drink or their aims and goals in life. One thing they all agree upon and that is the pursuit of happiness, of sa'ada. In order to achieve happiness in the home, each member of the home needs to be planting the seeds which cultivate happiness. And the more stable and happy you are in your home, the more productive and energetic you will be not only in your home, but also outside the home, in the workplace, at the school, at the university, at the college, you will also have the strength to be a better da'i, to be a better and stronger caller to Islam. Families are the building blocks of a society. And the more functional a family is, the better and stronger our communities and societies end up. Tonight, I would like to share with you a recipe. A recipe consisting of 33 ingredients that lead to happiness within the family. Because the family is a big cake and we want to make sure that it is sweet. Number one, the first ingredient begins in choosing the right spouse, spouse selection. Islam has set the criteria when it comes to choosing a wife or when it comes to choosing a husband. When it comes to choosing a wife, the Prophet wasallam said, that a woman is married for four qualities. Limaliha for her property, for her wealth, wali hasabiha for her status and rank, wali jamaliha for her beauty, wali diniha or for her religion. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam concluded by saying, "Fadfar bidati dini taribat yadak." Go for the one with the religion, and you will prosper. It is related that a man once came to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu during his khilafah and he is complaining about the ill conduct of his son. And so Umar summoned the boy and he spoke to him about this disobedience towards his father and that how he has neglected the rights of his father. So the boy said, Ya Amir al muminin hasn't a child got rights over his father? And Umar said, certainly. What are they, Ya Amir al muminin So Umar said that he should choose his mother, should choose the right mother. Number two, that she give him a good name. And number three, that she teaches him the book of Allah, the Quran. And so the boy said, Ya Amir al muminin my father did nothing of this. My mother, she was a magian, she's a fire worshipper. He gave me the name of Julalan, meaning a dung beetle, gave him a very bad name. He did not teach me a single letter of the Quran. So Umar, he turned to the father and he said, you have come to me to complain about the disobedience of your son? He said, you have failed in your duty to him before he has failed in his duty to you. 
you have done wrong to him before he has wronged you. As for choosing a husband, in the hadith found in Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوا تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيضٌ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if one, of, if one comes to you seeking marriage, and you are pleased with two things, you are pleased with his deen, and you are pleased with his akhlaq, with his manners, because unfortunately, there are some brothers who have deen, but no akhlaq. And so, if you are pleased with these two things, then give him in marriage, and if you don't do so, a great destruction will become rampant on the earth. If married to a non-practicing spouse, husband or wife, we need to use every strategy and every technique to reform our partner, especially empowering the woman, especially giving resources to the woman. Because as the famous Arab wisdom says, الأم مدرسة إذا أعددتها أعددت شعبا طيب الأعراق that the mother she's an institute she's a school she's a college and if you reform her then you are are reforming a a a people with strong roots referring to the children because the children will be spending most of the time with their mother. Advise your partner to perform salat and to be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا And command your family to pray and be extra patient. وَاسْطَبِرْ Be extra patient. So we need to be praying with our families. Praying with your wife. You know, in the West they say, the family that eats together, stays together. I like to say that the family that prays together, stays together. And I'm sure some of you brothers have in your hearts right now the question, what are you saying brother, that the brother that, that we pray in our homes and not in the masjid? That's not what I'm saying. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he used to pray with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and then he would go and lead his people in the prayer, having prayed the evening prayer. So to him, the second prayer was a nafila, a supererogatory prayer. So what we can do is, yes, brother, go and pray in the masjid, and come back and pray with your wife. From amongst the things that we can do to reform our partners, is to purchase an Islamic library for the house, whereby we have a book from every science, in, in our libraries, attend the lectures together in the courses, encourage your spouse to give sadaqah, visit people who are committed to their religion, and keep away from the people who do not, who do not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every time that you learn something new, go and share it with your wife. The next ingredient is taqwa Allah. And this is the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the first and the last of generation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ That we have instructed those who were given the scripture before you and yourselves to fear Allah. Now taqwa Allah is a very comprehensive word which entails a great meaning. And there have been many excellent, outstanding definitions of this of this word one definition that i personally like is one whereby a man came to abu huraira radiyallahu anhu wa arda and he asked him about the word taqwa and what does it mean and so abu huraira's response was have you ever taken a thorny path have you ever taken a road full of thorns so the man's response was yes i have he said what did you do on this path he said, every time I was near the thorns, I would keep away from them as much as possible. 
He said, this is taqwallah. So keeping away from the things that are likely to prick you, that are likely to harm you and make you fall into sin and transgression. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ so taqwa Allah relieves a person from distress and anxiety. It helps, you, it helps you through difficult times. And your wealth can increase through taqwa Allah. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرَى And whoever fears Allah, he will make things easy for him. The third ingredient is enjoining the good and forbidding the wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ That you are the best of generation or the best of people produced for mankind. You enjoin what is good, you forbid what is wrong, and you believe in Allah. This, was, this is the formula, this is the equation that makes us the best of people. And enjoining what is good and forbidding what is wrong should begin in the family home. The fourth ingredient is that each family member in particular, the father needs to protect the others from the vices that bring about the wrath of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Tahreem, O you who believe, protect yourselves and, and your families from a fire whose, f whose fuel is people and rock. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yusikumullahu fi awladikum. Allah instructs you concerning your children. We miss this verse. And we also miss the hadith which is found in Bukhari whereby the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ That all of you are shepherds and all of you are responsible for your herd. All of us are caretakers and all of us are responsible for those under our care. So, my dear brother and sister in Islam, we share in the responsibility and the accountability of what our children see, of what they hear, of what they eat, and their Islamic upbringing. We need to spend more time with our children. In a recent study, it was revealed that the average time that a parent spent quality time with their child was 20 minutes per night. 20 minutes per night. Think about it right now. A father or mother, how much time do you spend with your children? Our children are our investment for the hereafter. The more time that you dedicate and you spend teaching them about deen and about Islam, about the things that bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more they will benefit you and I when we are in the belly of the earth. On the day of judgment, a man will be elevated in Jannah to a higher status. And it will be, he will say, what has got me to this high level? I am not deserving of this. And it will be said to him that you had a righteous child who supplicated for you, and thus the high status. When the son of Adam dies, his actions cease to avail him in, except in the case of three things. Ongoing charity, sadaqatun jariya, wa ilmun yuntafa' bih, beneficial knowledge, and a righteous child who supplicates for his parents. I ask you by Allah, if your child was never exposed to the beautiful teachings of Islam, then how do you think he will benefit you after you have decomposed in the grave. Because as the saying goes, فَاقُدُ الشَّيْءِ لَا يُعْطِيهِ The fifth ingredient is to make the home a place which you remember Allah. ذِكْرُ Why have I mentioned ذِكْرُ Because it's the easiest action requiring two things. It requires you to move, move your lips and have a present heart. And if you can't move your lips, then you do it within your heart. And it is the one that many Muslims have neglected. And one of the pious predecessors 
of the past, he said, I know when Allah remembers me. I know when Allah remembers me. So they said, how do you know that when Allah remembers you? He says, when I remember him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me and I will remember you. And if you're complaining about your low energy levels, then I advise you to try the following formula before you resort to Baraka or other vitamin B supplements. Fatima, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the wife of Ali radiallahu anhu, she complains to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the house chores and how she has blisters in her hands and how she wants a servant, someone to help her. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to her, do you not want me to direct you to that which is more beneficial than a servant? He says, yes, I'm messenger of Allah. Or he goes to her house and he sits down between her and Ali and he tells her to say, before going to sleep, 33 times, subhanallah. 33 times, alhamdulillah. And 34 times, Allahu Akbar. That's the formula. And try it. No matter what's happening, if you want your energy levels to increase, my dear sister in Islam, the mother in Islam, then I remind you to adhere to these words before going to sleep. The sixth ingredient is to engage yourself in various acts of worship around the house. And there's a famous piece of wisdom which says, إِنَّمَا الطَّاقَةُ بِالطَّاعَةُ That taqa, that ability, that strength comes about through, the, through, obeying, through obedience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا That whoever works righteousness, whether male or female, while he or she is a true believer, verily to him we will give a good life. But we want you to be consistent. Consistency. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves those actions which are consistent even though they may be little. And what a beautiful sight it is to see the members of our family praying, fasting, reciting the Qur'an and, in, and, and doing various acts of worship. The seventh ingredient is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the times of ease. And if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the times of ease, He will remember you during the times of hardship. And I want to remind you of the story of Sarah. Of Sarah, the wife of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam wa ala nabiyyina salam. She was taken out of her home by force under the order of the tyrant of Egypt at that time. She makes ablution and she stands and she supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect her from him, from the evil of this tyrant in whichever way possible. And so when she is brought in front of this tyrant, she stands in front of him and each time, she's a weak lady. However, she is strong when she holds onto the rope of Allah. This disbelieving tyrant, he froze every time he stretched out his hand to lay his hands on her. He did this three times. And then what did he say? He said, you have come to me with nothing more than a shaitana, than a devil. He said, send her back. And he felt sorry for her. He said, not only send her back, send, send somebody back to serve her. And he sent with her Hajar. So not only did she return to Ibrahim, to her husband, safe from the tyranny of this disbeliever, but she also went back with a servant. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah, then Allah will find a way of ease for him. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ And gives him or provides for him from where he least expects it. And, and so Sarah, from where she least expects it, she comes back with a servant. The eighth ingredient is to expect the unexpected. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do people think that they will be left alone just because they say we believe and that they're not going to be tested? And we indeed tested those who were before them. And Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true. And will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars. The ninth ingredient is sabr, patience, which Allah mentions in over 90 places in the Quran. And in the hadith found in Muslim, the Prophet wasallam said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ Amazing, amazing is the affair of a believer. For there is good in every affair of his, and this is not the case with anyone else except for the mu'min, except for the believer. If he is blessed with good, he thanks Allah, and so he is rewarded for it. And if a misfortune befalls him, and he keeps patient, he will be rewarded for it. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, وَجَدْنَا أَلَذَّ عَيْشَنَا بِالصَّبْرِ He said, we encountered the sweetest life through patience. Even more eloquent than these words of Ibn Umar are the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As per the hadith found in Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ And whoever maintains patience, Allah will make him patient. And he goes on and he says, وَمَا أُعْطِيَ أَحَدٌ عَطَاءً خَيْرًا وَأَوْسَعَ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ And that nobody is given a blessing more better and more comprehensive than patience. The next ingredient that I remind you of is dua. If, my dear brother or sister in Islam, you are depressed in your family, or if you're ill, or you are going through a hard time, then raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him to bring you out of this hardship. Many people, unfortunately, as soon as they, they have a problem, they go and they spend uh, money to get better, or they go to the doctor and they knock on every door just to make things better. And they forget to knock on the door of the one who is able to give and provide for all. Now, when we talk about supplication or dua, I'm referring to two types. Number one is a protective supplication and, a curative, and number two, a curative supplication. An example of protection or a, a dua which provides a fortress or a shield is, for example, the hadith that we mentioned earlier, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan, wa'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasal, wa'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhul, wa'udhu bika min ghalabat al wa qahri rijal. This hadith, you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Every morning, O oh Allah, I take refuge or I seek refuge in you from anxiety and sorrow. Anxiety and sorrow. From weakness and from laziness. From miserliness and cowardice. From the burden of debts and from being overpowered by people. Also, for example, if uh, misfortune befalls you, I remind you to say the dua, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma jurni fi musibati wa khlufli khayran. Minha, O oh Allah, reward me due to my misfortune and give me better than it. Ingredient number 11 is look at those who are less fortunate than you and not those who are more fortunate. So look at those who are in inferior positions. Don't look at those who are in superior positions. And this is based on the hadith found in Bukhari and Muslim. Look at or compare yourself to those who are below you and not those who are above you. For this way, you will not belittle Allah's bounty upon you. And subhanAllah, don't always look at what your neighbors got, or what your relatives got, or what your brothers got. Maybe if you had what they have, you'd be far away from the din. So look at, the, look at, look at it from this way. No, ingredient number 12 is don't expect thanks when you do things. Don't expect thanks. Um, do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informs us that when a husband feeds his wife, when he puts a morsel of food in his, in his wife's uh, mouth, that, and he does it out of the pleasure of Allah, that he is rewarded for this. So you can turn your uh, duty of actually providing into reward. The 13th ingredient is to possess the correct aqidah, the correct faith, especially when it comes to al-qada wal-qadr. In the hadith which is found in Abu Dawood, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, and you should know 
that whatever has missed you was not to be for you. And whatever has befallen you was not to miss you. So if we really understand this sixth pillar of faith, if we really understand al-iman bil qada wal qadar, then this will make things, the decrees of Allah, make things easier on us and we become more submissive and, and um, accepting. The 14th ingredient is perfect reliance on Allah. Always relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-yaqinu billah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَإِن يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ That if Allah touches you with harm, that none can remove it but He subhanahu wa ta'ala. The 15th ingredient for having happiness in your home is to turn to salat during the times of hardship. As per the hadith found in Abu Dawood, that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, either hazabahu amrun, that when he, um, he would struggled by something, كان يفر إلى الصلاة, that he would flee to the salat. The 16th ingredient for happiness in your family is to have hope and to have optimism when things don't go your way. Remember that not everything that you perceive as being bad is necessarily bad for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ That perhaps you may dislike a thing and there is good in it for you. And perhaps you may like a thing and there is bad in it for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, فَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and perhaps you may dislike a thing, but there is a, an abundance of good in it for you. The 17th ingredient is to show compassion to, you, to the young ones and to have respect to those who are old in the family, to our elders, and to maintain the ties of kinship. In the hadith found in Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَلَا يُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا That he is not one of us, the one who does not have compassion towards our young and respect and honor those, our elders. And if you want your wealth to increase, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and if you want an extended life, then listen to this hadith. And the hadith found in Bukhari. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يُبْسَطَ لَهُ فِي رِزْقِهِ وَيُنْسَأْ لَهُ فِي أَثَرِهِ فَلْيَصِلْ رَحِمَةِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Whoever loves that he be granted more wealth and that his lease of life is be prolonged, then he should keep good relations with his relatives. And your relatives are your biological family and your extended family. The 18th ingredient towards having a happy family is kissing and touching members of your family. And the Prophet wasallam he used to kiss his wives before he would go to the salat. And in the hadith found in Bukhari, a Bedouin came to the Prophet wasallam and he said to him, do you kiss children? Because we don't kiss them. So the Prophet wasallam he responded by saying, it's not in my hand that Allah has removed from your heart the rahmah, the mercy. Also, yani hugging the members of your family frequently. And I remind you that our skin, it has three types of memory. When it comes to touching, it has three types um, of memory when it comes to touching. It has, there is a good touch, and that makes you feel that you are loved. And so we remember this. There's also a bad touch. And that makes you feel that you are being abused. And then there is no touch, and it makes you feel that you are being neglected. So touching is a technique, and we find the Prophet ﷺ using this technique, which even today is taught by secular, in the secular world. The 19th ingredient is gentleness. Practice gentleness in your homes. And listen to this beautiful and eloquent hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, إن الرفق لا يكون في شيء إلا زانة ولا ينزع من شيء إلا شانة. In the hadith found in Muslim, that when gentleness enters a thing, it adorns it, it beautifies it. 
And when gentleness is stripped away from a thing, it actually spoils it. The 20th ingredient is to control your anger, controlling the anger. Now, you can do this by saying, A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaitan rajim when you are angry. Because shaitan, he throws a heat bead into your hearts, and this is why you get angry. Um, if you are standing, sit down. Um, if you're in, uh, having a, a, an argument in the house, if you're in one room, go to another room. And I want you to remember the virtue of taming, of curbing, of controlling your anger. And I want you to lend me your ears for this beautiful verse in which Allah also subhanahu wa ta'ala stipulates in this those who repress their anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and hasten to forgiveness from your Lord. And a garden as wide as the heavens and earth prepared for the righteous. Those who spend during ease and hardship and who restrain anger and who pardon the people and Allah loves those who do good. And those who when they commit an immorality or wrong themselves, remember Allah and seek forgiveness for their sins. And who can forgive sins except Allah? And who do not persist in what they have done while they know. Those, in other words, those who commit themselves to the previously mentioned things, their reward is forgiveness from their Lord and gardens beneath which rivers flow wherein they will abide eternally and excellent is the reward of the righteous workers. The 21st ingredient is always in your family display your best character. Husnul khuluq. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith found in Musnad Ahmad he says inna rajula la yudriku bi husnil khuluq darajat as-sa'im wal qa'im that verily a person through good character he reaches a level of the, he reaches the level of a person who always fasts and who always stands up in night prayers the 22nd ingredient is show and express your gratitude and your thanks towards the members of your family who correct your mistakes when a person is about to be harmed by a scorpion or by a snake or by a spider or any other harm and you are warned about it don't you thank that person don't you say jazakallahu khairan you saved my life you have done me a great deal of good then if someone advises us concerning our shortcomings concerning our deficiencies then we need to thank them we need to say jazakallahu khairan we need to say jazakillahu khairan thank you for pointing out my faults that are within me because these faults had they not been pointed out to you they could have led to your destruction they could have led to you to your to your transgression the 23rd ingredient is to invite righteous people students of knowledge and islamic teachers into your home because when people of iman and people of taqwa they enter your house they fill they fill your house with light they fill it through their good speech they they may give you a, a, a verse from the Qur'an or a hadith or a word of wisdom through their manners and through their excellent character. And I'm sure many of you know the hadith in which the Prophet wasallam he gave the example of the likeness of a righteous and an evil friend is the likeness of the blacksmith and the perfumery. The 24th ingredient, you need to aim at achieving a balanced life. And this is our pro another problem that we have. We don't have a balanced life. There should be a time for your mind pursuing Islamic knowledge. There's going to be a time for your body. We need to be moderate in our food and drink. Body and clothes should be clean. Good appearance. And there should be a time for your soul performing various acts of worship. We need to have time for our children teaching them the Qur'an. Embedding into them the love of Allah, the love of Muhammad Wasallam, the love of the companions and the love of the Muslims. We need to spend quality time with our spouses. The 25th ingredient is putting in a helping hand around the house. And this includes the males. And I'm sure by now I'm in the good books of the females. Many men, they think that it decreases from their status or their masculinity if they pitch in towards the house chores. 
You're no better than the Prophet He used to sew his clothes and he would mend his shoes. And in a hadith found in Bukhari, when Aisha was asked about the actions of Prophet in his home, she said he would be occupied with the working for his family. And when it was time for Salat, he would go to the Salat. And she said, as per the hadith found in Musnad Ahmad, he was a human like any other human. He would clean his clothes, milk his cattle, and serve himself. The 26th ingredient, share your problems that you have with other members of your family. Perhaps they can benefit you with some beneficial advice. The 27th ingredient is don't make decisions on your own, get the family involved. For example, I think the house is getting a little bit too small for us. You know, what do you think about moving? What school should we put our children in? I'm thinking about taking up another job. Yani, think, think aloud. Why, why is it that we, we've got these problems, we've got these ideas? Why aren't we thinking with our families? Number 28, avoid double standards in your personal and social life. Don't be what's known, don't play Jekyll and Hyde. You've heard of Jekyll and Hyde. Don't be one personality outside of the home and another personality inside the home. Number 29, choose a dwelling, a house, in a suburb that's going to remember, help you with the remembrance of Allah. So a house close to the masjid, an Islamic center or an organization close to an Islamic school. Uh, and inquire about the neighbors. Inquire, find out. We have a saying, in the Arab, an Arab saying, Is'al an jari qabla dar. You know, ask about the neighbor before the house. Because the worst thing is you want to put up with a, with a bad neighbor. Number 30, encourage the members of your family to pursue Islamic knowledge, support them morally and financially, and perhaps if you support them and show them your support, uh, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless your house as a result of this. And in the hadith found in Tirmidhi, there were two brothers at the time of the Prophet one of them, one of them used to attend the Prophet's circle to acquire knowledge. And the other one used to go out and earn, uh, earn a living. So the one that was earning a living, he came and complained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And my brother, he seeks knowledge and I'm the one that's bringing the, the, the bread home. I'm the one, the income, the, the income, the breadwinner. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says to him, perhaps you are being provided for because of your brother. So how do you know if we send our children to learn, to, to learn Sharia, to um, become mashayikh, to become students of knowledge. Perhaps this will be a blessing for your home. Number 31, don't waste time. Be proactive and make the most out of your health and free time. Because health and free time, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith found in Bukhari, there are two blessings in which many people incur loss, health and free time. Number 32, spend quality time with your family, and not just a routine life. So perhaps engage in a weekly outing, go to a restaurant, go for a drive with the family, have a monthly picnic, have a yearly holiday, invest in a board game, play Scrabble, play Islamic trivia, do something which is of quality, which cultivates this happiness and cultivates this love in the relationship. And finally, the 33rd ingredient is distance yourself from the actions that lead to hardship and adversities, from sinful actions that come between you and your family. Some of the early pious Muslims, they used to say, Inni la fa'ara fi wa He would say, I would disobey Allah outside of the home and only to find the effects of that sin and that transgression in the behavior of my wife or my vehicle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ That whatever of misfortune befalls you, befalls your household, it's because of what your own hands have earned, and Allah pardons much. <laughs> Wa sawmu wa salatu wa hajju wa sakah